Roughly 15% of the Australian grain crop is treated with harvest weed seed control. And from what we're hearing from new surveys that we've conducted through Weed Smart, is that a lot of growers are getting on board with harvest weed seed control and they're getting into the tools that can be used over the whole farm. So we could see a big increase in that percent of the grain crop that is about to be treated. What chaff lining is, is just taking all of the chaff off the sieve, putting a chute on the back of the harvester to narrow that chaff down and putting it in a narrow chaff line and putting the harvester back in the same spot year after year. So we've got chaff line on chaff line on chaff line and the straw is chopped and spread as normal. When they put all the weed seeds into that chaff, weeds just don't really like germinating there. So we're getting a lot of rotting and we're getting a lot of weeds just not growing. So for the vast number of weed seeds that we put into the chaff line, only a few are germinating. So it's become the new low cost option, the entry level harvest weed seed control option that growers can get into. In a lot of cases, they're just making something themselves and going for it like, like they did with windrow burning years ago. Chaff lining can be used in conjunction with other tools, so it can be a lot of growers are grazing the chaff lines. Once again, it's anecdotal, but they're really happy with how the sheep are going on the chaff lines. We know that only about 1-3% to of the rye grass will survive passage through the rumen of the sheep, so we know they're not spreading the, the seeds back out over the paddock too much, but they will probably make a mess of the chaff line itself. And so it remains to be seen how effective it is using chaff lining and grazing. Some growers are using chaff lining in a lot of their crops and then perhaps thinking, right, I want to get rid of that chaff line. So maybe dumping a canola windrow on top of there and burning a conventional windrow. So that's another use. So combining chaff lining with windrow burning looks to be a really great practice. Whereas other growers have said, look, we're getting so much rotting, the chaff lines aren't actually that weedy. Uh, we, uh, you know, we're quite happy we don't need to burn a windrow on it. It is early days and we don't know how effective chaff lining is going to be at running down a big seed bank. So some growers are saying we'll windrow burn for a few years to get the numbers down and then switch to chaff lining. Once again, it's gut feel and it's anecdotal, but that's what quite a few growers are looking to do and that seems to be a, a pretty sensible option too. Chaff lining can be used over the entire crop. However, what we are finding is that, and with all of those tools that focus on the chaff, inside the back of the header we have a baffle to keep the weed seeds under the baffle and put the straw over the top of the baffle. And we're finding that in green crops, we're getting blockages in there. And so particularly canola, we are getting blockages. So it may be something where growers don't chaff line in canola if it's a bit green because of you know, the hassle with blockage. Most growers are just making a shoot themselves. They're making it out of all sorts of things, whether it be three mil plastic. So one guy's made one out of a, a tarp, PVC tarp. Steel is obviously very common. All sorts of different things, but a shoot to just narrow down the chaff. Uh, I guess some of the key things is to the opening sort of wants to be about 350 to 400 mils at the bottom. We want to aim for a 200 mil wide chaff line if we can. What we find is if we have a 400 mil wide opening, the, the material follows the direction of the chute. So even though it's 400 mil wide at the bottom of the chute, we can still end up with it flowing down and ending up with a 200 mil wide chaff line. The other part of designing something yourself and going and using chaff lining is the baffle. And so the baffle is needed for all of the chaff options. Chaff cart, one of the mills, chaff on tram lines, chaff line, all of these things that just focus on the chaff. We're trying to get the weed seeds to go below the baffle and into whatever we've got on the back of the harvester and keep the straw above it. And we need to do that to make sure we get the weed seeds where we're trying to get them to go. If we don't have it there, often we can get too many weed seeds escaping with the straw. And so that baffle design is where we really just have the sieve and we have a baffle situated sort of here, maybe 350, 400 mils above the sieve. And it can be sort of either above the back of the sieve or sitting back a bit. There's so many different options. There is a commercial one, West Oz Boiler Making Make One. Uh, and the growers that had that last year were really thrilled with it and, and had a really good run, very few blockages. And, and it, they could just buy it and bolt it onto their harvester and know that it was going to work. The cost of chaff lining, it can be as simple, as cheap as a couple of hundred dollars to make your own chute and baffle or you can spend three to five thousand dollars on a commercial one so that's the cost of getting into it then the only ongoing cost then is the nutrient 
concentration into those chaff lines. We know that based on our figures that is roughly two dollars or so per tonne of wheat grain harvested. So if you've got a two tonne crop the cost of the nutrient concentration is about four bucks with chaff lining. So it's really cheap. The overall cost to a farmer is anywhere in that sort of four to seven dollars per hectare depending on yield of course. It works on all systems but what we need is the harvester needs to be controlled traffic essentially. The harvester needs to go in the same spot every year and what a lot of people have is just where the harvester is is one third the width of the boom spray. So it's a compromised controlled traffic system uh, and the other part of it is that they don't block up. Growers are using tine seeders with no problems at all. Uh, we don't have to have a disc seeder. We do know that we can get a shabby row of crop establishment when we put a tine straight into that pile of chaff. Just like the weeds don't like germinating, the crop doesn't like it at all. And that's probably one of the big negatives of chaff lining. We say to farmers, are you happy with a strip of weeds there you can manage? Or would you rather spread the weeds out and have them compete with your crop? So putting them in a strip, they can compete with each other and we could maybe put extra herbicide there. Sometimes at harvest people just put a little knife guard over the front of the harvester and don't harvest that little bit of crop because it's full of weed seeds. So there are things that we can do. Anecdotally the farmers are saying look they're really much cleaner than you would think. We must be getting a lot of rotting. The Esperance farmers that have been doing it for a while say when we get a wet summer we get a lot of rotting in summer and then we end up with less weeds in the crop whereas if we get a dry summer we can get that strip of weeds in the crop. Through Plan Farm we had a project with GRDC Investment where Nick McKenna from Plan Farm went to Esperance, interviewed 10 growers down there who were using chaff lining or chaff decks, putting chaff on the tram lines and so he interviewed a lot of growers and there's a case study book about that. But in one trial what he did is he put down a piece of marine carpet on the ground, had the farmer harvest over it with his chaff lining chute, worked out there was 15,000 ryegrass seeds on that piece of mat. He then went back the following July, the farmer had sown the paddock to canola and of 15,000 seeds that were put on that mat, only 100 came up in crops.